Alrighty guys, we are going to continue on with the oil leak repair on the Kawasaki engine. Just to recap, we are working on a FS481V with the CS10 spec number. I highly recommend uh, searching for the video and I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, the part one of this, you really need to watch uh, that video but uh, we're going to just start replacing the parts that were bad. We have a bad breather gasket and a warped breather cover. And uh, in video number one, we, uh, we tested the, the reed valve and I showed you how to, to test that. So let's just go ahead and we're going to get the new parts installed. We'll get the ignition coils gapped properly and then we'll get the flywheel and stator and everything else uh, buttoned back down and uh, we'll get her running once again. The numbers for the parts that we are going to be replacing are as follows. The gasket is unidirectional, but however, I always like to put the writing down because that's the way it came off from the factory. And your breather cover is also non-directional. It'll go either way. When you torque your uh, breather cover down, you want to do it in a crisscross pattern. Uh, the torque spec is 61 inch pounds. I'm going to do it by feel. I can feel whenever this gasket just starts to crush. I've never had a problem doing it by feel. So if you want to do it with a torque wrench, that is completely fine. I recommend it. 61 inch pounds. So just do a crisscross in any order you want to do it. Reinstall your stator and just line up your holes. just pan head Phillips again use common sense when tightening tightening it down I'm not sure of the torque spec on this I've never seen a spec there's probably one out there but just mm, get it tight obviously just a Phillips head screw mm. Go ahead and lower your flywheel onto the engine. However, be super careful not to hit your magnets and bend these down. These, these are very, uh, they're just made out of plastic and they'll just break off. So when you set your flywheel down over here, you need to do it, uh, oh, just as accurate as you can. I like to stand over the machine, use both hands and lower the flywheel that way. Flywheel key. Install your flywheel attaching bolt and torque it to 41 foot pounds. Go ahead and install your ignition coil and bring it all the way to the rear like this and just finger tight your bolts. And do the same with the uh, number one cylinder coil. So the way you uh, set your air gap on your coils, you have the flywheel magnet and you want to rotate it around until both legs of your armature here and here make up the difference between 
the coil and what we're going to do we're going to place a ten thousandths business card in there and then we're going to set the gap when we loosen the coil the coil will fall in place by itself slide your business card in and loosen your coil sucked it up to the flywheel put just a little bit of pressure on it and then torque your screws to 51 to 61 inch pounds now we have a good 10,000 scap you should just be able to run your card in there and have slight drag on both legs of the coil Here's a tech tip for you. When you go to tighten these down, always tighten the right uh, bolt first because the twisting force of the screw will make the coil want to go that way. If you twist this one first, sometimes it will want to kick this leg out of the way as you're trying to tighten it. So just keep that in mind. I've always done that all my life. All right, so the next order of business, we're going to replace the valve cover gaskets, as you can tell. They're seeping just a little bit. They're not leaking, but you can see the dirt build up around the gasket. Sometimes you can just go in there and just uh, tighten them up just a little bit more and you'll get by for a little while longer, but let's just go ahead and replace them. As you can tell, oil likes to puddle up right here, uh, especially when the engine is tilted on its side on this application for what we call a pad change oil likes to run up in there and just pull up however I've got the old one off we're gonna clean the old gasket material off of here and the new style gasket the one I talked about earlier in my original uh, part one video we'll go ahead and get the new style gasket put on and I do believe they have uh, stopped the uh, you know the apparent valve cover leaks on these and uh, should be good to go. Cylinder head nice and cleaned up. You want to make sure this surface is not gouged or warped. I would highly recommend just taking it over to a piece of glass and some, some sandpaper, say some 300 grit, and just make you a couple of passes, figure eight style, and then recheck it and just make sure your, uh, your contact points or just make sure it's flat is all your uh, are after you don't want to just grind this thing down uh, <laughs> so just be careful and use common sense when using sandpaper on aluminum I went ahead and touched it off with some sandpaper on a flat surface as you can tell my high spots are right in the middle of the gasket channel all the way around so this is good to go and the new gasket Here's another little tech tip for you. A lot of these dealers are going to try to get rid of their old stock before they start selling the new parts. So whenever you get this, if you need these gaskets, tell them you want the new style graphite gaskets. And they're thicker and they're far superior to the, uh, the paper gaskets that, are, that they put on from the factory. Go ahead and slide the, the new gasket on and then your rocker cover. So just go ahead and start in the center. And do a crisscross pattern on this as well. Fifty-one to sixty-one inch pounds is the spec on these, and of course we'll just do the other side as the same exact 
procedure. Right, we got everything buttoned back together. We're going to put the blower shroud on it, put a propane bottle on it, and see if she will crank up. Righty guys, before we button her all back together, I'm not going to put the blower shroud on it just yet. We're going to get the uh, propane bottle on it here and get it cranked up and run it and let it get hot. And then we're going to check for leaks. because I don't have the air filter on it. These things are real finicky. Runs good, no leaks. did have to put a new vacuum line on it the old one was oil soaked and just uh, wouldn't fit the fitting very good on the bottom of the, uh, the carburetor block so I had to replace it alrighty guys we got the Kawasaki oil leak fixed and uh, good to go if this helps you out give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and uh, while you're there doing that, just go ahead and click that notification bell and you'll get all my new videos. Anyway, guys, y'all have a good rest of your day and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Have a good one. More Medic One.